Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite camera <laughs> hugger, Gardner. I don't even I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? <laughs> So, Pharonix is reporting on System User Dispatch, which is a new feature of the Linux kernel, and it might just allow for Linux to run modern Windows games and maybe even anti-cheat software. Let's talk about this. To understand why this is needed, we actually kind of need to talk about what operating systems are, what Wine is, and what it does, and where it might fall short. Now, this might be over some people's head, but I'm going to do my best to try and explain uh, this in a way that even a kid could understand. Let me know in the comments if I do a good job of that or not. <laughs> and and if you're like a kernel dev or you understand operating systems better than I do and I get something wrong, let me know in the comments. Um, but also keep in mind, I'm trying to keep this simple. Now you can think of an operating system as an onion, right? It's got layers. <laughs> it might be better to think of it as like a cake, a layer cake, but whatever. The first layer is your hardware. Uh, and it sits at the base of this cake. The, the second layer of the operating system is actually the kernel and hardware drivers. Uh, the kernel provides system calls or syscalls, which are efficient means of accessing system resources and functions across various devices. The operating system works in a way to sort of normalize the playing field where different computers have different types of hardware. And you as a developer don't want to have to write software that uses an NVIDIA graphics card and then write a new version that uses an AMD graphics card. The next layer is the API. And this is something that comes from your operating system. Uh, an API stands for Application Programming Interface. Examples of an API would be something like DirectX or Vulkan. Now, these sit on top of the kernel and provide high-level abstractions for system calls. Finally, you have your user space, which is where most of the applications that you would use as a user live. They, they live in the top level here of user space. Now, each layer reduces the difficulty of writing software uh, by providing what's what we might call an abstraction. So every layer that you go up in the cake, it becomes easier to write software. Um, but each abstraction also requires more work uh, for the computer to do the higher you go. So if you write one line of code that accesses the API, that line of code that you're referencing actually becomes a hundred. And then when it reaches the kernel level, it becomes a thousand. So you can see how there's like a compounding complexity issue where things might become less efficient the higher in the cake you go. Now I'm going to stop talking about cake because it's making me hungry and wanting cake. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, why do we need all this abstraction? Well, if you didn't have all this modern convenience, then people writing games would need to specifically write code for each sound card or graphics card or Wi-Fi adapter or network interface. And it, you would end up having basically the DOS era all over again. Now, if you've ever played old DOS games or if you ever watched like LGR, watch how you have to configure uh, Duke Nukem 3D, for example, uh, so that it uses a certain graphics card or it uses a certain sound card, but not all the sound cards that were on the market were supported because developers only had a limited amount of time and they had to invest their own time in creating uh, software to use that hardware. And then you begin to see why operating systems and APIs are so important to the modern era of computing. I mean, imagine if everyone writing an online game had to write their own drivers for network cards that are on the market, for every network card, or you buy the game and the, the game doesn't support your network interface. I mean, it would be an a virtual impossibility at that point. Now, up till now, the graphics I've been showing have been more or less Windows. Uh, but if we look at the Linux OS stack, we see basically the same thing. I mean, we have the same levels and even a few of the same APIs across the different platforms. And if you're running Windows and Linux on the same machine, you even have the same hardware as the base. But what if you want to run Windows games or even Windows software on Linux? Well, those Windows games are written targeting Windows APIs and those simply aren't available on Linux. Or are they? Well, if you install Wine or have Steam on Linux with Proton, then you actually have a whole suite of open source alternatives to Windows APIs on Linux. And that's pretty awesome. And so when people say Wine is not an emulator, it's really not. Wine is just a, a layer that sits at the API level of your operating system that provides compatibility with Windows APIs. So writing software 
for an operating system's APIs makes writing software easier, but the software becomes less efficient. This is because the higher you are in the stack, the more work that has to be done to translate the code that has been written into commands that the hardware can understand. Another thing to consider is that sometimes APIs don't provide uh, abstractions for every hardware function. So if you're writing something like a game where performance is of the utmost importance, you might make the informed decision to bypass certain API functions in favor of accessing kernel system calls. There's trade-offs for this. First, you are ignoring the ease of APIs, but you're also, you know, supplementing that with the speed of a lower level system call. In fact, in some instances, ignoring APIs can increase performance by orders of magnitude. This is where we start running into issues though, running Windows software on Linux. While it's comparably trivial to provide Windows APIs on Linux, providing Windows kernel system calls uh, is slow, difficult, and let's just say not optimal. That is until syscall user dispatch. This Linux kernel function allows syscalls to be redirected back to Wine so that Wine can handle these Windows system calls properly. Syscall user dispatch has been the collective effort of Calabra and Valve engineers, and Pharonix reports that it's close to being merged into the mainline kernel Linux uh, 5.11. Now, I'm reading this and thinking, that's really cool, but it seems like intercepting all these system calls might be really slow, right? But it seems like the dev have thought about that. I mean, first of all, it's really inefficient to intercept system calls in the first place. System user dispatch is actually far more efficient uh, than the current means of capturing and interpreting system calls for a few reasons. Firstly, it can be enabled on a per thread basis. And secondly, it can be enabled or disabled on the fly, which means that only parts of the game that need to have system calls interpreted uh, can be processed that way while the rest can be run at near native speeds. You might be saying, well, that's really cool, but like, why is this news, right? It's simple. It has been a trend as of late in the Windows software development world to bypass Win APIs in favor of Windows system calls, and uh, that's had a major impact upon Wine's ability to properly support some apps. Now, some of the software in question is games, of course, uh, but some of it's anti-cheat software and some of it is DRM schemes. The question is, will syscall user dispatch allow Wine and Proton to properly support these aberrant games and software? Only time will tell, but I don't think Valve and Calabra would have invested so much time and effort into this tech if they didn't think it had potential. But I'd like to know what you guys think. Do you think this has potential for Windows gaming on Linux? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I wanna say thank you to everybody on Patreon who makes this show possible. If it wasn't for them, I would not be able to do this. I would not be able to do the job that I do now, making content for you. Uh, so thank you guys. If you believe in the work that I do here, consider pledging your support to the channel with a monthly contribution over on Patreon. It makes a world of difference. But yeah, that's gonna do it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, if you believe in what I do, you can help support the show over on Patreon, like I talked about. You can also hit that like button. It really helps us out. If you feel so inclined, you can also subscribe to the channel, maybe ring that notification bell. Uh, but no matter what you do, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day.